in June, our region's governments are going to be addressing the five focus areas and making political commitments around these areas, which you mentioned earlier. It's increasing health and pandemic resilience, strengthening democracy, building our green future, fostering green clean energy transitions, and accelerating digital transformation. The theme that was selected by the Biden-Harris administration, building a sustainable, resilient, and equitable future, is uh, built around the, the, the thought that the Ninth Summit needs to respond to our hemisphere's most pressing issues. We've gone through a terrible, terrible pandemic, COVID-19, and it really exposed the cracks on our health, economic, uh, education and social systems. And so we need to address these issues. The lack of equitable access to economic, social and political opportunities is on the table. Governments and stakeholders have told us that the summit has to respond to the, to the main needs of the people in the hemisphere and to help them be able to access um, opportunities for all, to create equal opportunities for all the citizens of the region. Another part of sanctions which can uh, help us uh, sanction all, uh, uh, increase the list of bans which can be sanctions. Because now, now we see that uh, the only uh, uh, minor um, quantity of banks now are under sanctions. So we believe that we can increase this amount. Another question that we, uh, we can move towards secondary sanctions on other countries which can or could help Russia to avoid sanctions, to bypass sanctions. So again and again, uh, sanctions should be very uh, critically analyzed and uh, in a way how uh, they can uh, make Russia suffer. And of course, if you look at perspective, uh, sanctions can work and uh, can make Russia economy uh, some uh, damages, provide some damages for Russia economy. But uh, for this particular moment, uh, which time is very important. For us, very important is time. We can't wait until the next year when we see how sanctions can make some problems for Russia. So I want to start by expressing my full support to the Venezuelan women leaders from politics and civil society who have come together at this time of conflict and division and are proposing a path forward to ensure that they are equally heard and represented. The road to Venezuela's democratic transition cannot be built without women's leadership, including expanded participation in every sector of politics and society. In every country in the world, including the United States, women have been staunch defenders of equity in and outside the home, Women more consistently advocate for freedom of speech and assembly, freedom from gender violence, and unimpeded access to conduct a healthy political dialogue and electoral competition. Only when women's voices are heard will the resulting outcomes, policies, and resource allocations reflect the needs of a full swath of society, which also must address the most visible inequalities. A crisis that disproportionately affects women cannot be solved without women. Women's participation in politics must also cut across socioeconomic, ethnic, and racial lines. Each and every woman working to represent their communities in elected office has something to offer. As I have also witnessed during my time in office, the solidarity that comes from female politicians working together organically builds consensus for key decision-making moments. <laughs> 